Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. I'm out here in the Tonto National Forest and we're gonna continue our series on improvised field comps. I was out here a couple weeks ago where I decided to do some scouting, found a uh, early 20th century barbed wire fence and wanted to see if I could tune it up with my QRP tuner. So I'm back out here a few weeks later and we're gonna actually see if we can debunk this myth. Uh, maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So I set up my camp here. Uh, before we do that, let me actually show you something differently I have done this time. I realized in talking to a few people that uh, I'm probably actually building an off-center fed dipole. And I don't know if you can see it here, but I've got some of the 33-foot uh, counterpoise wire I showed last time. And I've intentionally put it over the uh, branches of uh, the local shrubs here just to see if we can give it just a tad bit of height, not much. So uh, the camp is fairly modest. I did do the ruck out here uh, about a mile and a half, mile and a quarter. So the plan for today or the objective is to see if we can fire up the Panasonic CF20 Toughbook and hit a targeted wind link uh, session out in uh, Wickenburg, Arizona, about 50 miles from my location. I have great luck. In fact, we hit that station when we did the electric fence video. Uh, my Eberly stock fact track basically is uh, the basis for what I'm doing here. Uh, the analyzer this morning looked good. I used the dope card and while it may not come on camera, I'm about 1.7 to 1 on 7.1 megahertz. We're going to be using my FT818ND man pack. So we're only running six watts today, so this could be a challenge. And then over here on the ground, like I showed you last time, we have the uh, QRP tuner from MFJ. This is the 9201 pocket tuner and we have that 33 foot radial going off of the negative and then we have a alligator clip with a six foot patch line going out to our barbed wire fence so let's see if this works if not we've learned something new and in general this is a lot of freaking work it's more gear so if you guys don't have an attention span honestly you're best served by having a simple cobra head and enough wire to throw up a traditional dipole it's actually a lot less weight than carrying the the tuner uh, the analyzer and all of this nonsense all right let's fire up the laptop and see how we do well folks we have some bad news but you know that happens out here in the field this was not intentional uh, in fact i wanted to hit that one link station out in wickenburg i have multiple cf20s and uh, the one that was on my desk the one that i thought is my normal everyday a uh, system that has ubuntu fully configured for my wind link sessions apparently is somewhere else in the house this one is one that i was testing with windows 10 and unfortunately no amateur radio software on here so we're gonna have to try voice uh, and see if we're able to, uh, you know, reclaim what's left of this video. So apologies, I really wanted this to be a digital video, but you know what, that's how it goes. Uh, that's how we learn. All right, folks, let's see how this goes. It's Spanish. So it's working as a good receive antenna. It's always expected. Well guys, it has been a morning of fails. I was tuning around within the amateur radio band, specifically on the 40 meters, and I'm getting a ton of shortwave listening. So this barbed wire fence is acting a lot like a long wire antenna. So for example, I think this is a station potentially in Chinese. Yeah, pretty sure that's Chinese. All right, folks, let's go ahead and try to get on the air. Not terribly optimistic. Uh, there were a lot of fails today, especially around digital. That's on me, not on you. Uh, but coming into this, I knew that this was probably going to be about a 10% chance of success. But let's go ahead and key up. I'm on figures uh, 7.285. And uh, I'm not going to step on anybody for the most part. Like I said, I'm picking up a lot of, uh, not so much interference, but a lot of different stations, mostly overseas. Is this frequency in use? And the SWR is actually pretty flat. This is Kilo Tango 7, Romeo Uniform November, operating QRP in the Tonto National Forest using an improvised antenna. I'm running a barbed wire uh, fence antenna. 
Well, that actually turned out to be a uh, picking up a station out in the Ozarks. Let me uh, switch uh, frequency. We're going to QSY. Yeah, there's an Oklahoma station. Listen carefully, we're both getting the um, ham radio uh, chatter as well as a station in the background that seems to be playing music. This is going to be a fun after action report. We'll probably do it out here over coffee. Kilo Tango 7, Romeo Uniform, November. All right, guys, this is absolutely a bust, but I've learned a lot. So uh, let me go ahead and break down some of this equipment, and uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the after action report here, uh, make some coffee, and we'll talk everything about everything I learned. Uh, like I said, this is why we get out here and train. Not all of my videos are going to make me look like a hotshot operator, but was really curious about people doing the clip into the barbed wire fence. Stay tuned. All right, guys, coffee is good. It's getting all over my beard, but let's jump into a quick after action report. So learned a lot through all the failures today, but let's start with at least a couple of the successes. So I was able to find the location that I scouted out a couple weeks ago. I was able to quickly attach the uh, antenna system that we deployed last time, and the SWR was actually pretty good. I consulted the dope card I created last week, and I was pretty much spot on. So I was about a 1.7 to 1 SWR. So in terms of my transmitter being happy, it was pretty happy with the match. Now, I had planned on doing some digital data modes and establishing a session to that Winlink station about 50 miles from our location, and I made the mistake of bringing the wrong laptop. I'm in the middle of a software development project that is getting some new life, my MCOM Tools project, and believe it or not, I have three of these CF20s and 13 FZM1s, and I'm constantly running different experiments, and I grabbed the wrong laptop. So that's on me, but this can happen. So what if you're in a position where you don't have your digital mode equipment? Well, you have to switch to voice. So we tried that. And what I found out very quickly is that uh, this antenna is actually more of a long wire antenna. And those antennas are typically very good on receive. And we saw that we were getting interference from multiple different stations across the world. We were getting shortwave stations all over the amateur radio bands, which was actually kind of interesting. So I was getting into Asia and South America and also listening on the same frequency for the most part uh, to uh, the local, or uh, I guess across the country, some um, stations like Oklahoma, for example, and the Ozarks. So what I discovered is this antenna is probably good for receive, but terrible for transmit. And uh, one thing I want to share with the new guys is just because we have a good SWR and we present a good impedance that our transmitter is happy about, it doesn't mean you've tuned the antenna. This is a terrible antenna. Uh, it's probably not radiating RF effectively. In fact, my range is probably just line of sight. I even doubt that I'm going to the ionosphere and back down and being able to get any type of usable signal. So I learned that. So in general, I'm going to say with the amount of effort and work that's involved, I uh, probably should have unhooked all this stuff here, between the QRP tuner, um, bringing the Nano VNA, uh, which requires batteries, uh, the extra wire, at the end of the day, I'm better off bringing a resonant dipole. Just that little Cobra head with uh, two 33-foot segments would have put me on the 40-meter band. Uh, so that's probably the way I'm going to go. So this idea of tuning up a barbed wire fence in a pinch, it's probably not going to be worth a whole lot uh, based on my experience. I'm actually going to ditch it. And in fact, it's going to make my gear simpler, lighter, and smaller. So moving on, I'm going to say that for me, the barbed wire myth is debunked, but there's also the possibility that I did it completely incorrect and wrong. But again, this is the barbed wire fence that I had to work with. I tried to improvise it. 
about the only success we had was on receive. So if you want to start jamming to some uh, Chinese uh, audio tunes, we've succeeded. All right. With that said, guys, this is the last video I'm going to do in the improvised field series, unless you guys have some suggestions and we can take it up later. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to the guys on Buy Me A Coffee. You guys are amazing. We had a couple of uh, member live streams the last two months. We have a third one coming up for the members. I started a Discord just for the Buy Me A Coffee members. Uh, so those guys are all mingling and having a good time. So check that out if you want to support what I'm doing. Uh, these days, I'm going to try to do a video every two weeks or so. Uh, if I can do it more frequently, I will. Uh, but I'm focusing on my MCOM Tools software development project. Um, it is a project that I believe is the right thing for doing field expedient digital communications, and it's taking a few hours out of every morning, so I don't have a whole lot of time to produce these videos uh, anymore. So we'll see how that works going to two videos per month. So hopefully YouTube won't ding me too badly. Um, Outside of that, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Well, folks, a few of you have asked why I always run Linux. Well, I absolutely hate Windows. Uh, my CF20 is actually designed to uh, dual boot, and I accidentally fat fingered a key and booted into Windows instead of Linux. And now I'm out here in the field on battery power, and Windows is giving me the getting ready, don't turn off your computer. I have set every setting over the last few years to turn off all of that nonsense, and it still does this at the most inopportune times. So you will never see a Windows video on this computer. I think it is a terrible operating system for uh, ham radio fieldwork. Rant done.